Now I would like to invite to join me on the stage Tom Finkelperl, Commissioner, Department of Cultural Affairs, <laughs> Susanna Laval, hi Susanna, Chair of the Cultural Affairs Advisory Commission, and Ben Rodriguez Cubanis, <laughs> Vice Chair of the Commission and Chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, and I'd, I'd really like to just uh, dive, dive right in uh, with all of you. Um, I've prepared a, a couple of prompt <coughs> questions uh, and do hope to open up the conversation to the audience. Uh, Betsy's offered us an overview of the cultural planning to date and, and I wanna hear from you about your learning. Uh, maybe from each of you, just one or two uh, big ideas that are, that are rising to the surface for you. Are they, is it working? Hello? Okay. Tommy, you wanna kick us off? Yeah, yeah, so, by the way, that was an extremely brief uh, summary. Even though it might not have seemed brief, it was very brief compared to, I did a city council hearing the other day. We've had 185 meetings with 10,000 people. It's been unbelievable. But I actually wanted to quickly get back to some of the stuff we've heard about is quite similar to what the Dance NYC recommendations were. And some of the stuff is stuff we're already working on, but doesn't mean we, it, we have a lot more work to do. And, and actually, we're hearing from a lot of people about uh, some of those issues. So let me just quickly say that, and then maybe you guys can take it from there. So affordable workspace, the affordability crisis in New York City is not just a crisis for artists. It's a crisis for the city. It is a you know, very difficult situation. And what, a situation that's actually not gonna be solved by the cultural plan. We've had people say, the problem is capitalism. And so, well, maybe it is or isn't, but that's certainly not something that's gonna change on the basis of New York City's cultural plan. But Dream big, Tom. Well, <laughs> so uh, affordable workspace, we are, you know, Gina mentioned that we're, we've thrown in some money for this. We are putting a lot of money into affordable workspace and trying to develop live workspace for artists. The mayor set very aggressive agenda. Uh, we're, we are doing that. We need to do more of it. We need to be more creative in doing it. Arts education, you know, you guys have been at the forefront of that. Uh, uh, dance education particularly is important. Right now there are 290 more certified full-time teachers in the public school system than they were when this mayor started. That is on the basis of a big investment. And, and by the way, the biggest deficits were in dance and theater. Uh, visual arts and music were actually doing better. So a lot of the investment of those 290 new teachers are there. And we need to do a lot more, but th that's also. And then I would say, actually, anybody remember two years ago at this very, in this very room, uh, I have a background of having uh, run uh, a museum that had an art, a program called Art Access. Art Access was very successful in bringing a very diverse audience of people with disabilities into the museum. What it did not do was focus on artists with disabilities or um, staff. And so I, I actually had a, a great confrontation or discussion, let's say, in this very room. And I think it, I've been on a journey uh, in relationship to disability and inclusion. Um, and I will say we've already taken some steps. Uh, we have a consultant to the cultural plan, Christine Bruno. I don't know if she's here today, but that's been very great. The disability, the DANT, Disability New York City, Dis D, uh, Disability Arts New York City Task Force, thank you, Simi, uh, has been one of the great uh, outside advocate groups. Uh, and we have a new job at the agency, which will include disability as a focus, disability arts. Anyway, I just want to say that some of the stuff that's happened in the planning process is already happening. We don't have to wait until June 30th. Um, and I will say one other thing, that, that there's research. You guys have done research um, at Dance NYC. There's a big research study coming out later this week. I don't want to go into the details because we haven't announced it. But it's the Social Impact of the Arts Project. It's been a two-year project um, at arm's length from the agency. It's the University of Pennsylvania doing it. It's privately funded. But it's something that we were hoping and praying would, would be ready in time to have input into the plan. Everybody knows that there's a great kind of personal journey you can go on in the arts. Many people understand the economic impact of the arts. But what hasn't been studied in New York 
in, in depth until now is this social impact. Like, what does it mean to communities to have artistic assets and artistic participation? And it actually means a lot in terms of a lot of things that go beyond uh, what it does to your soul. So I just want to say that there's stuff happening already in relationship to the plan. I've never been this busy in my life, actually. Uh, I'm a very busy person in general, but this has been crazy. So <laughs> I really, you know, we're really, July really, one. What's that? July 1, vacation. July, <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward. Um, no, but actually then, and I will end it with this. July 1 is the beginning. Really, it has to be the beginning. The, um, uh, if people know the city budget is is finished by June 30th, so the day we um, uh, issue the study, the, the this year's budget will already be finished. But that's when we begin the impl implementation. The implementation takes the next however long. Uh, well, it's a five or ten year time horizon. So thank you. That's thank you, thank you, Tom, Susanna, Ben. A couple of, a couple of things bubbling up to the surface for you. Good morning. First and foremost, congratulations to all of you because at 8.30 in the morning, the energy up here was just like, so. And for downstairs, starters, that's, too. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the main issue that came up for me through this planning process and, and listening uh, has been clearly accessibility. And um, it is inextricably tied to affordability for all. So ultimately, it's about equity and social justice which are and should be the end goals of this cultural plan. Um, when I see the, the huge hunger that there is for dance in this city, for instance, I tried to get in line as soon as I thought uh, I could for fall for dance. <laughs> $10 tickets, right? I was number 4,000 something on the line. Well. You know, I actually got in up in, in the gallery, but in fact, I shouldn't get in because I should not, I can pay more than $10. So it, there's something that has to be restructured about that. It, one should, there should be a pay scale. I should not get in for $10. It's, it, it's someone else. Who, um, so there, but, but festivals like that, that make things affordable, uh, are very, very important. And it also, the only other thing that I thought is, um, I hope, I do not know, all of you know much more about this than I, but maybe Juilliard and Lincoln Center and um, City Center have, have a way of working towards uh, buildings that are used 24 seven, so more rehearsal spaces get, get released and more places for all of you to work and rehearse. Thank you, Susanna. Thanks. Thank you, Susanna. And thank you, Lane, for um, inviting us today. And thank you, Gina, for um, hosting us. Uh, so two of the things that have, I think, for me, uh, made it to the surface, um, certainly the equity issue, um, both in terms of the equitable distribution of cultural activities and programming and of resources as well, the affordability of uh, living and working in New York City and connected to the space issues that have been um, also highlighted this morning. Um, but let me just uh, talk a little bit about the role of the Citizens Committee and the process. I think many people are curious about what that is and how we work together. So the Citizens Committee was uh, created after the legislation and um, it is uh, composed of many of your peers. Uh, there are, uh, the politicians are ex officio on the committee. So. Um, we work very closely, I'm the chair, we work very closely with the commission, which uh, Susanna chairs, and we meet regularly, and we are taking this very seriously, especially the public engagement piece. Um, as you heard from Hester's collaboration, there have been hundreds of gatherings, and uh, the commissioner and the DCLA have been very, very open to hearing from everybody who will talk to them. They've instituted office hours, um, We've gone to many of the community groups. I, have, I went to the one in Brooklyn, and uh, the turnout was amazing. Um, so we're all taking this very, very seriously. We are meeting regularly. We actually have joint meetings with the commission. Um, and it's a process that I think at the very end, uh, obviously the cultural plan cannot do everything for everyone, and it is not going to be, as Tom said, is really the beginning when this cultural plan comes out. Um, it is 
recommendations. It's not going to be voted upon. It's not going to become legislation or anything like that. But uh, I know that everyone in the city council and the mayor, uh, uh, Tom testimoned, uh, test testimony this week in city council, really highlighted the extent of the activities that have taken place and what we're learning. So um, it's really you need to participate and make sure, as Lane has done with his recommendations, uh, that your thoughts and what you want for the city's cultural plan to look like to be part of that process. So that's what I really would encourage everyone to, to do. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Ben. And that might be a nice segue for us into to opening up the conversation a little bit. Just as a way into this, I, I might ask you, it's, what can we tell you that will, that will help? What do you want to hear from the dance community here today? <coughs> you've I mean, done, I think you've done a good job. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> So, I mean, I think some of the communities have been more mo mobilized than others. I think that, you know, Lane, your recommendations came out of a, a, an engagement. But I feel like if there are uh, parts of the recommendations that you haven't heard voiced, that's what we need to hear now. We, you know, there's some things we expected going in and other things we didn't uh, understand. For example, uh, you know, after the plan was already underway, there was a tragic ghost ship fire, at, you know, which killed 26 artists in San Francisco. You know, there's a DIY community in New York City that has turned out to be extremely well mobilized uh, and is giving us a bunch of recommendations to make sure that that doesn't happen. You know, how is it, is it compatible to have a robust, let's say, party uh, slash um, warehouse party slash, you know, live workspace, et cetera, environment in New York City that's safe? And so, so that wasn't expected. Um, but I think it, so what is those unexpected things, if there are communities that you're part of that haven't been heard from, there's still time, we're in that engagement phase. Uh, as I said, Dant has been extremely uh, well organized and we really appreciate the folks who put all that time into it, so. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Tom. Shall we, shall we open it up to, to all of you? Do I have comments, questions from the, from the audience? Joan. But use the mic. Um, Should we, in interest of recording, do we need to use that mic? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it belongs to the boys. Um, uh, Tom, I'm, I'm interested in what exactly the role of the Department of Cultural Affairs will be in carrying out the cultural plan. And also, will this cultural plan um, have some provision for the sustainability of dance artists and dance companies in the mix, as well as other arts? So it depends. So the question related to, I think people could hear the question in relationship to what's the Department of Cultural Affairs role. I mean, some parts of it, are, we're leading the way. Other parts, we're not. Paul King is here today. He's in charge of arts education in the public school system. We're not the dance in public school system uh, facilitators, that's DOE, uh, but we are very much in contact with DOE and one of the major important things that, that's happening is much better communication. Look, DOE is an exception, I'm already in direct contact with Paul all the time, but many other agencies where there are actual <coughs> implications, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene has 14, we had a conference call with 14 different people at that agency who are dealing with arts and culture. We don't have a direct line and we don't have a specific coordinator at some agencies. So a lot of it happens at other agencies. There are also things that should be enacted not by government. So the plan is not just for us, it's for us and other agencies and the city as a whole. So we, we're sort of the, the gatekeepers in a way and the plan, you know, the citizen, Ben's committee, Susana's committee is a permanent committee charter mandated. Ben's committee, uh, commission, I'm sorry, the commission. The committee will continue to meet and, and watch and see if we're actually getting towards the goals. Uh, so that is, you know, so it's gonna continue in that way and we have oversight. And, and by the way, half of the committee is appointed by city council, not by cultural affairs. And then in terms of, you know, your other part of the question, I think that the, um, Sort of the part of the question that I'm, I'm remembering has to do with sort of the ongoing viability, for example, of dance groups in New York City. 
look, we have uh, information, and in this gets a, some of it back to just affordability questions. How can we foster the affordability? The big problem is real estate. Um, and again, that's not something we can solve, but we can contribute to it uh, based on recommendations from this study. Joan, if, if, if I heard you right, you were also asking the question about discipline, um, which, is, which is to say we're getting, the mac we're getting the macro perspective on what's bubbling up in the, in the cultural planning process. But how are you all thinking about creative disciplines um, and, how, and how they are all um, expressly and equitably included in the, in the recommendations and what's the role for, for dance in here? Do you so, I mean, I could just say one thing. So <clears throat> that is something that we haven't been thinking about. I would want to just say quite clearly that, look, in the time period that you're talking about where you said that there's a 31% decrease, and I have to, I believe you, but I want to see, understand better at that, there's been a pretty big increase I know. in the amount of money going to the nonprofit sector. So I don't quite know why that happened. I think we need to dive further into understanding that. Look, I mean, we got an extra money. The, the CDF money has increased uh, well. And also, the, uh, the city council initiative's gone up exponentially. It's very surprising to me that it's gone down that way. So uh, again, we look more broadly that we have the panels haven't changed. I don't know why it happened. We have to find out. Thank you. So I think uh, different communities, different uh, disciplines have organized better than others. Um, so some have been very active and very vocal. Um, others have not. Uh, it's still time to engage for those that haven't. Um, how the disciplines will be uh, identified or the issues uh, within each identified in the actual plan itself. We haven't really gotten there yet. We're still gathering all this data, gathering all this information. Within the next month or so, when we actually start drafting the plan, I think we'll have a better idea of exactly what it's going to look like. Um, in terms of the committee, uh, we are mandated to stay in place for five years. Um, so we will be looking at the recommendations and um, going back and making sure they're being implemented over the next five years. And by the way, there are very low thresholds for the number of times the committee is required to meet. But if Ben is the chair, I'm sure it's going to meet. It's, we've been meeting practically. We've been meeting monthly. monthly yeah. Which is way more than required. Um, the other thing I just want to say, one of the big issues that's also come up, which I'm sure will resonate in this room, has to do with, with paying artists and paying uh, a living wage to people who work at cultural institutions, especially no small nonprofits. So we are thinking about that. Uh, the other issue that's specifically related to dance, I think, has to do with career transitions, which obviously uh, might be more of an issue in dance than some other. Thank you. And Susanna, you had? Um, I came to New York um, a few years before um, Baryshnikov came to New York. And I remember those years as glory days of, of dance as a discipline right front and center in, in the world. Everybody wanted to be a dancer. We need to get back there as a discipline because the spotlight has to be back on you. And of course, everybody talks about the arts in New York, but I think more needs to be said about dance as a discipline. Um, you know, I'm from Puerto Rico, so I grew up in a dancing culture. I, I dance, I, it's fair to say I danced every day, almost every day of my life growing up. Um, on the beach, on the streets, we, houses, wherever. Um, New York City, despite its astonishing creativity, is very cerebral too. So there's a mind-body split going on that, that only <laughs> disciplines like dance can, can help heal. And I was just fantasizing the other night what if everybody who goes to a gym to relax would learn to dance, and instead of lifting weights, they'd lift each other and have <laughs> uh, And anybody. can the cultural plan make that happen? <laughs> no, but I'm sure everybody in this room can make that happen. Anyway, the, the point is the spotlight has to be back on, on, the, on dance as a discipline. That, yeah, so I will say also from my years in Queens, we had a uh, series called Dancing Queens. And that was both uh, a kind of residency program for contemporary dance, but also included 
at schools. So pretty much every uh, immigrant group in New York City that I've come in contract, uh, contact with has a dance group. So Mexicanos Unidos State Queens is essentially a dance organization at this point. It went from being a sort of immigrant-oriented to, to really the best thing they did was dance, and it got better and better and better. Um, and I've many times uh, referred to the Sri Lankan dance group in Staten Island, which uh, I met after having sort of speculated that they might exist, big Sri Lankan community. They finally became a nonprofit. There is a lot of dance. When you think of New Yorkers and New Yorkers and dance, you have to also consider those dance groups that are that are within communities in the boroughs. Yeah. Well, you, I went to see um, a, an extraordinary group that dances in the Queens Plaza. It's called Women Who Dance, and I think you started that uh, as part of it. Some movimiento, yeah. And <coughs> Women Who Dance, and it was it's all women who. They get together three times in the morning for two hours each, and they dance. And it's therapeutic. It's women who have been either abused or raped. or it's, It has an astonishing, and it was the most joyful two hours of my life. Yes, in Corona Plaza, in Corona. Thank you. I know I've seen a, a couple hands that I want to get to. Simi? Hi. Um, and thanks for the shout out. Um, for um, and you said, uh, okay, yes. okay. Hi. Uh, Ben, you said that the cultural plan is recommendations and it's not legislation. Now, I serve on the commission with you both, and I have been to a number of the DCLA events. Um, and you solicit, you all solicit from participants information and suggestions and needs and so forth. I'm finding it, we're finding it difficult to understand how to formulate some of these recommendations because we aren't getting, or I don't feel, or maybe I'm not hearing it, the kinds of specificity that would help us formulate recommendations. In other words, um, we don't know whether this cultural plan as it's going to be written is going to be 10 pages in, in sort of loosely outlined format, or it's going to be more specific, relica uh, relevant to allocations of funds, if it's going to be more specific in terms of any number of other kinds of variables that need to be uh, addressed in a cultural plan. And, and as Betsy said, uh, planning has lots of power, and we recognize that. And we're, we're feeling uh, stymied in terms of formulating our recommendations because we don't, um, we don't know what they're going to do and how they're going to be shaped in the cultural plan. Let me um, address that. Um, so we actually started to get into some of the specific on Friday when we had the joint meeting, um, and we're getting there. Sorry. We're getting there. Uh, it's just really we're at the stage of just gathering all this information and the recommendations and so forth. But one of the things also we've learned, because we've looked at what other cities have done in terms of cultural plans, and I think it was the Chicago uh, plan that came up with like 180 recommendations. We don't want to go there. We're also mandated with uh, 10 areas that was in the legislation, and that's what we need to look at. So it's going to be very specific around those uh, 10 um, issue areas that were uh, initially uh, identified in the, in the uh, legislation that we're going to look at. So I, I also think, I mean, I, I think I understand what you're saying, and we are still gathering the information. But if, again, if you do look at other cultural plans, most likely, we're not going to say, we need to have a million dollars of new blah, blah, you know, for a particular, there's not going to be a number, because we don't yet have the understanding of exactly how it's going to uh, play out budget-wise. But if, you know, I, a recommendation, I'm not saying, but I have heard from you and from others in, uh, at Dant, that there, there may be a recommendation from you to us, whether we can do it or not, for, let's say, a particular particular funding stream towards disability arts, uh, you know, that has, you know, and you could also even make a recommendation of a particular scale that you think is meaningful. Um, that doesn't mean it's necessarily, and then we have to, you know, we're digesting it all. And what we're doing is we have now 
thousands or tens of thousands of data points of recommendations that have come up with the 10,000 people we've met, on, tens of thousands of people we've met online, and we're looking for the patterns that say that the city as a whole recommends A, B, and C, right? So, I mean, you can bet we are going to have disability arts in this plan. It has been left out of other plans. It's not going to be left out. How specific we get is the question in terms of the recommendations. I don't know if that. Simi, what do you think about a specific funding stream for disability arts? Um, well, obviously, I would love there to be a specific funding stream for disability arts. Sometimes what happens, though, when, when funding streams are allocated or initiatives are allocated specifically for one group, uh, then they get shortchanged in other groups. And so as long as there's an understanding that there needs to be a recognition of intersectionality in every kind of issue and guarantees of equity in vis-a-vis -vis disability in other allocations, of course. And disability costs money um, from our wonderful interpreters to other kinds of access features to other ways of looking at uh, inequities vis-a-vis -vis disability. There are costs and an allocation of funding would be necessary and it's something I'll be talking about a little bit uh, in our session uh, later. But uh, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Simi. Are there, I see a hand up, up there. Yes. Hi, I'm Kim Saverino. Um, I'm a working artist. I'm also the vice chair of the Dance NYC Junior Committee. So I was at the city council hearing on Monday, and I'm wondering, I'm hearing a lot about different advisory committees and special representatives who are advocating on behalf of certain groups of people. And I don't totally see that representation for young working artists, which is the majority of the cultural workforce in New York City. I know we can make specific recommendations, but I'm, I'm wondering what the reach out has been to this community of people who make up the arts so workers we, in New York. Thank you. Um, first of all, we, we actually have a youth committee, but younger than what you're talking about. Uh, which has been meeting regularly and making recommendations. Those are actually people sort of up to 18. So there's a high, essentially high school. We have a individual artist, a couple of individual artists meeting coming up. I anticipate, uh, well, you know, so it hasn't been, we haven't had a particular group for young artists. We have had, we have, by the way, done a, a, a convening around aging in the arts. Um, but so maybe you can get involved and can and we have one? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So yes, you've got a new assignment. Um, no, no, I will say no. This is important. We we heard criticism from artists that artists weren't being heard. So we say instead of being defensive, because of course we can tell you lots and lots and lots of artists have come to many meetings. Um, we, we convened some, some additional meetings. There's a NIFA meeting. Eddie, what else is going on? Eddie is actually doing uh, this on. Uh, we've done a lot of online stuff. We do have, uh, we are working with folks like NIFA, like Dance NYC, et cetera, who have more direct engagement with individual artists. And yeah. we're also, we've become increasingly opening up the office literally to have artists just come in and talk to us. Right. So we've had artists, different artist groups come in, but maybe we can talk to you about that as well. Shirley from also Cultural Affairs, you got to speak up. Sorry, we're also uh, just right now finishing uh, developing a, a survey. Yes. Uh, a survey for artists, specifically for artists and cultural workers, uh, that will go out online. Uh, and I think our intention is to distribute it to all of our grantees, but also through the commission and the committee. Uh, to try to get it as far and wide as possible. And so that really is an opportunity. It's not just uh, you know um, multiple choice questions. There's really an opportunity to provide narrative responses and cultural workers' uh, ideas about policies and programs, et cetera. So that, I think, is going to be the next uh, point of real substantive outreach for artists and cultural workers to get their we were putting together a survey, a general survey for the general public, and we realized that wasn't going to be an interesting survey for artists and art workers to fill out because they have so much in depth. That's their life, it's your life. Um, 
So anyway, so we're open. We're open. So we're getting to the point where we're not going to be able to keep saying that anymore. We're open. We still have a month and a half or so to go of the engagement process, but we're well over halfway through that. So if you want to do stuff, let's do it quickly. We, we have been saying this over and over again. There's still time. There's still time. Let's do it. Let's have the next meeting. But we're getting to the end, so let's talk. One more question. Um, thank you all for your um, advocacy and uh, extreme hard work on this. Um, my question is that given that this is an election year, if there were to be a change in administration, can you help us understand what happens to this cultural plan? Yeah, it's an excellent question. I mean, I think the thing is that, first of all, the committee stays in place. The commission and the commissioner, we would be replaced. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that. No cultural commissioner has ever succeeded from one mayor to the next. So the plan is, you know, it's not a plan of, of you know, the... Um, a particular commissioner, there's so much input, but I, absolutely, there's no question about it. That's always a question with all kinds of planning. With the housing plan, with the you know, zoning, whatever hasn't been accomplished already in this administration. So I'm very much hoping, and you know, poll numbers look good right now, but who knows? Um, I don't know if you could ever answer that question in relation to anything in government. I mean, just look at the Affordable Care Act or, or whatever, the, you know, Paris Climate Pact signed on behalf of the nation, and now we have a new president. What can you say? I mean, I just don't think there's a good answer. Um, just quick addition. For those of you as old as I, I there are very few in the audience, um, in the 80s, we went, the, the, there, it was a time of the culture wars, and um, I think they're coming back. And I think the art world was more cohesive then than it has ever been, and we've got to do it again. Come together and advocate for the arts. So the world's changed. Um, if this one isn't working now either. Um, <laughs> I have bad luck. I don't know. I don't know. Um, the, the world changed on November 8th. Too right. So the, the other question that I would I would offer here is how you how are you thinking about the cultural plan in relation to the national context and what this opportunity for leadership is and could be, given the shifting political climate. I think it's more important than ever to show that the arts are alive and well and and fighting for equity and for life. I would just say it's a very important time for what the arts have to offer to our country. And I think it, I think it ups the ante, but a lot of what it has done for us, for the, let's say, New York City government or de Blasio administration, we were a sanctuary city already. We're still a sanctuary city. We were already working on a cultural plan that used the word equity as one of the values. We have already been, you know, doing things like the municipal ID card with the cultural benefit. There's, you know, to, with our on behalf of all New Yorkers, including undocumented brothers and sisters in, in New York City. So a lot of what has to happen is we have to stay the course, and staying the course just becomes more difficult in a situation with the federal government may not be sympathetic with us. So that's what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And uh, we started a little late today, so we're, we're ending a little late, um, uh, but I thank you for, for bearing with us. And I just, just one final question, which is, you know, what would you, what would you like us to take away out of this room today? What are, what are our action items? And I still think other that, parting that you know, there's still lots of opportunities to be involved. So createnyc.org is the website, and that keeps you, all the upcoming meetings are on it. Uh, fill out the surveys, and when the um, rec draft mec recommendations come out, be kind. <laughs> but, but be candid. Candid, but <laughs> kind. <laughs> Any, anything? I would just say, just always remember that you're such an important community, and keep dancing. 
thank you all. And the question has been great. And just participate. Get your voices heard. Thanks. Thank you. Participate. Keep dancing. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, Ben. Thank you all.